Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's go out and see what's happening. Whew, it's about 20, 20 or so degrees. Last night it was zero. So, let's see what's happening. Oh, it's definitely nice. I got made a nice big area to work in. Woo! See that low. Let's see, we'll check out the heated cabinet. Yeah, it's working good. Nothing's frozen. See that? All right, let me get you on the stand. All right, this is what I started the other day. Oh my goodness! I'll be right back. I gotta wait. I gotta wait for the heat to warm up in here. It's freezing. It's so cold. Can't get my gloves to work. <laughs> Jeez, Louise! It's like putting on ice cubes. Holy smokes! All right, I'm going to wait for these to warm up a little bit. This is all the hardware. I'm going to add these, like I showed you guys in the last video. Um, but these are all going to get spray sprayed like a um, like an updated gold. It's like a mat. But it's really nice. So let me let this warm up. I'll spray them and then I'll show you when they're done. I'll show you the uh, paint I'm using. So it's rust oleum. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Pure gold. And uh, yeah, it comes out really nice. The trick to this, because it's not like regular spray paint, if you've ever done fingernails before, painting your fingernails, when you put on the, um, uh, it, it's like the, the clear fingernail polish that has sparkle in it, if you're not careful, when you go to put it on, you'll pull all the sparkles right off, if that makes any sense. So in this, when you put this on, you just got to like slowly mist it and like let it fall on there and then stop. Because if you keep on doing it, it'll just all come right off. It's it's, it's very odd stuff, but practice on a little scrap, and uh, it really does make for a beautiful color. It's a nice soft gold. It's not um, it's not harsh and uh, ugly looking. Anyways, all right, I'll show you how it looks. I'll show you how we warm up the paint and ourselves at the same time. Oh my god, it's freezing in here. Have fun. I'm going to do a coat of this mat. This is I get this at Home Depot. I just put it in another container because it's the top gets ruined. Uh, this is a mat clear basically water-based. I use it all the time and use a foam foam brush. Use a foam brush and make sure um, you pour some out in another container because if you don't you're gonna ruin the whole can so all right I'm gonna put a coat on this I'll show you what I do and uh, make sure you have some in the bowl and make sure you just get it all off here you don't want it all bubbly and the way I describe this is if you've ever used uh, mop and glow on your floor if you put too much it leaves it all white and kind of bubbly on the floor but if you just barely put enough on so it's a dry coat and just barely covers it that's exactly how you want to do it so watch how I'll show you and I don't do it any rhyme or reason see that's too much already 
when you can see white like that it's too much so get it on there make sure you cover it really good and then go back and forth with the grain see that nice and smooth that's all you want to see is just so it looks wet you don't want to see anything else no bubbles or nothing and I always make sure I cover it up with a wet cloth um, to keep it from drying out while you're in the midst of working and can you see the spots here okay so wet and then you can see Or it's drying probably only take two minutes to dry and you can you can coat this all day long as many coats as you want okay this has been two minutes maybe three minutes of the most let's recoat it again no I don't pay attention to grain until I'm done you want to just make sure it stays wet on the top and as soon as it starts to dry don't touch it if you have any weird marks leave it because it's going to get all pilled up and it's going to make some weird marks so don't bother don't bother touching it you can keep on recoating it carefully doing the sides and after you've done quite a few coats as many as you think you need it depends on what you're going to use it for um, I'll rub my hand over it to see if there's any little pills or anything you can just use a piece of paper and you can rub them off um, you can use a really fine piece of steel wool or probably like 350 320 or 350 sandpaper just barely go over it and then you can do a final coat uh, and it'll be super super smooth you don't you don't have to be really fussy with it so yeah let's do a few more coats and then I'll get back to you guys all right this is the third coat so far they all need to be flipped over but you can see the color it's my, much uh, nicer than that brass all right I'm gonna get this up here on my counter I made this lazy Susan to make painting easier going to clean this stuff first and I'll show you what I use just get a wet rag and I use crud cutter and pick it up at Home Depot it's probably ten fifteen dollars or so and I just use the scrubby end of the sponge that's all I'm going to put this in the warm water for a minute. A little bit slushy in there. But this degreases it and deglosses it and preps it for paint. Usually I'll 
just give everything a wipe down at the same time. Not in bad shape. Now this is very dirty, so I'm just going to wash it off for first. Give it a little wipe down. Nothing too fancy, just get the cobwebs off. And this piece is finished all the way around, even the back. And don't forget to do underneath, because there's nothing worse than having somebody come to pick up a piece of furniture and they go to put it in their car and it looks like every spider is underneath the bottom. Remember, I already finished the top, so let's not uh, throw the cleaner all over the place. There's obviously going to be some sanding that needs to be done because I can feel the finish is a little bumpy up here at the top. can give me a thumbs up if uh, if the microphone's working good. I'm trying not to talk too loud. You can leave comments down in the bottom. Let me know if the microphone sounds okay. And if you guys like what I'm doing, I would love it if you guys subscribed. That helps me get my channel off the ground. And don't forget to hit that like button. You can hit the little bell to notificate yourself. Uh, if not, I mean, I don't have any problems getting notified. I just go on my YouTube and if somebody has a new video, it's pretty simple. It's right there on the front. But if you want to actually get notified, you can hit the little bell. And then they'll tell you when you have a new video that's been put up. If you don't want to have to keep on checking your YouTube. Now inside looks really good. I'm just going to wipe it out, but I don't want to use this rag. Uh, I'm going to use another one that doesn't have any cleaner on it. Just to give it a wipe out. Inside is spotless. I like to get up where the drawer goes into. There's always a lot of dust in there. And I like to wax the, uh, the drawer slides. So when customers get it, it'll be uh, nice and smooth. Ah, that looks good. Give it a couple minutes to dry. Definitely going to have to hit this with the sander. Let's see if I can show you guys. I don't know if you guys can see. 
Yeah, see these lines? That's bumpy. So if I took I took a razor blade, I'm sure the finish will come right off. Yeah, it's better than I thought. So I can just use the sander. Now remember, I just did the top. And I just want to barely scuff up the sides. Don't forget to put your hearing protection in. And I'm just using a worn out piece of 220 sandpaper. see that or not. I'm going to move the light. Maybe that will help. Seems to help a little more. So I'm just going to do down here where I can't get with the sander. And I'm just doing this because I do see some loose top coat from the factory. And because this has raw wood, you can see here, this is raw wood now. I'm going to use a primer because if you don't, the tannins will bleed through. And we don't want that because you'll never, you'll never get to do enough coats of paint on here to cover it. Sure that's not. I was going to do this a nice royal blue. I figured it would look great with the gold hardware, but then I was thinking on doing it white. Um. good to me. I'm just going to wipe this down with a damp cloth. Let's see if I got everything. that dry and we'll be right back and we'll check it over before we uh, start priming all right this is dry enough looks uh, looks pretty good to me let's get to it when I prime, I use a high bonding primer that has shellac in it. It blocks all the stains. I just put them in these squirt bottles. It's like a it's like a condiment bottle that you can refill and you don't have to worry about uh, getting all your stuff uh, contaminated. 
That works really good. Just and then you don't waste it. You don't have to put it back in the jar. It's pretty nice. get the top painted because we just finished it. So get the paint on there nice and wet and then come back and do your long strokes. Pretty simple. I'm going to do the back too because it's finished. Normally you don't do the back. But this could be put in the middle of your living room. You could have this uh, as a nightstand. If you had a freestanding bed in the middle of your bedroom and you're going to see the back and if you're working in a place that it's really humid uh, you'll be able to work with the paint longer. But if you're working in an area where it's really dry, you got to get a move on. But put enough paint on there. And then come back and get rid of all your brush strokes. So you don't have to be fussy. Just get it on there. And after you get it on there, then you go back and you brush out the other side again if you need it, if there's drips or anything like that. You want to catch them before they dry. And you don't need a fancy brush. You just need a brush that's comfortable for your hand. And remember, this is primer. So it's going to look like a dirty coat. Let's see now. Go back and just check to see if you got any drips. That avoids you from having to do any sanding. Yes, I am going to go over the hardware. You want to check your drawers. Does your drawer sit in your cabinet or does it sit over the front of the cabinet? If it sits over the front of the cabinet, then you want to make sure you paint the sides really well. And don't be sloppy and get it on the inside. Just take your time. And I'm going to show you when I open the doors.
and you'll see the paint have some bleed through because of the raw wood that's on here. line nice and crisp so I'm gonna clean that off before the paint dries on there there we go now we want to get this edge up here edge see this edge is behind so we want to get that painted too it's behind the other door it overlaps I should say so get it on there and then if you need to wipe the side off keep it nice and fresh I'm going to let this dry and we'll get back to you in a couple minutes. All right, it's been well, maybe 10 minutes or so. I'm just going to go over where I think there are any spots that need to be touched up or any bleed through. Actually, Looking pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. <laughs> it's looking fine to me. Only a couple little spots of bleed through. But like I said, it has shellac primer in there. All right, now we just got to figure out what color we want to paint it. Well, I think I'm going to do it in the blue color that I was talking about. Let me see if I can get some more light over here. That's a little better. Pretty blue color, that's for sure. Now, if you need to spread it out some, you can use the mister. You want to keep it moving so you can uh, get rid of the brush strokes. Basically, you want to keep it wet on one side. Oh, 
hopefully you guys can see. Now if it was starting to dry, just give it a little mist. Come back, brush it out so you don't have any brush strokes. This is the first coat, so this is going to look dirty. I feel like I'm right in the light, walking the light, so I think it's getting a little dry. Come back and do your long strokes. This is going to darken up quite a bit. This is just uh, on top of very light colored primer. Go back, make sure you don't have any drips. Always make sure you bend down and look up because the molding underneath always gets mixed. So if you think it's getting a little dry, you can hit it with the mister. If you keep the brush flat, you won't put it in there into the raw wood because then it makes a mess. So just keep the blush, the brush as flat as you can do it. See, even if you just do it like that, just flat. And every time you do another coat of paint, it's going to cover that. So I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, I want to get the doors open. And the nice thing about chalk paint is it comes off with water. So basically, until it's uh, until it's cured. So basically, if it dries, you don't like it on somewhere. Just uh, get a wet rag and get it off. Use a little elbow grease. Looking good. Just gonna keep this edge wiped off. But like I said, the blue will come right off because it's water-based. And actually, it's easier to uh, get it off after it dries. That way, that you're not smudging all your stuff around. So I'm just gonna wrap up my brush with a wet towel. Put it on top. Let this dry and then I'm going to come back. Just want to show you guys how it's drying. See how it looks splotchy. And it will do that because this is a little darker here because there's probably more paint than here. This is only the first coat. And you see how it looks very streaky. Well, we'll let it dry a little longer, and we'll get back to you guys. All right, let's get back to painting. See, when it goes over this top coat, it's going to be a lot drier and harder to spread, so... Feel free to give it a good, give it a good mist. It kind of like lubricates it. If that makes any sense?
It's a beautiful blue color. It's nice and rich. Not everybody likes it, but I was going to do it white, but I just don't think the uh, I just don't think the color of the top goes with white. Well, that's just my opinion. Don't worry about getting it perfect again. Just smooth out your brush strokes. You can always do the holidays if you find any on your last. I always do a touch-up coat. Uh, make sure you check back here. And don't buy those expensive $30 misters. Just go get one that uh, comes right apart with cleaner in it. Dump the cleaner out. They're like four or five dollars at the dollar store because those misters are only going to last so long. So why spend thirty dollars on a mister? And yes, it works exactly the same way as the expensive ones. I was sick a couple of weeks ago, and everybody's been looking for me to see why I haven't been posting any videos. is a very uh, physical job so you have to be feeling good to do it and I don't know about you guys but when I'm sick ah, I just want to be sick and be on the couch I don't really want to do anything else I mean besides not having any energy to do anything else I'm just pooped. I don't feel like even moving. And then you got to feed yourself and all that kind of stuff. It's not not the easiest thing to do when you're sick. For sure. Doggy hair. I have a little chihuahua. And she doesn't come in here unless it's summertime. But her hair gets on my clothes and comes out here with me. So I'll tell you a little information on how I started. I've been working in a lab on vaccines for uh, I was working 15 years in one lab and then about 10 years in another lab and I s left about four years ago right around there and I started doing furniture well I've always kind of done home improvements and I've always done my own furniture and all that kind of stuff but um, when I left the lab very high very high stress job when I left the lab um, I started this at my house. I lived in Lowell. Now I've moved to New Hampshire. I have two grown boys. And a fiancé. He's got two grown daughters. We are empty nesters. Trying to figure out... Uh, what we want to do with our next step um, I'd like to move to North Carolina where there's less winter less winter more summer 
can ride our bicycles, can ride our motorcycles, do more, um, do more farming, grow more of our own food. I do canning. I do pressure canning. We just, uh, I just broke out the uh, seal meal. I had one for a long time, just a, you know, the regular one that does the bags of food, and I used it for a long, long time. As soon as I would uh, bring my food home from the grocery store, I prepped it all, and I'd have a small little chest freezer. But um, you know, now that my kids were grown, I get rid of the freezer because I wasn't buying bulk items like that anymore. Um, but now that we're we're starting to do it again. You need more of a freezer, and obviously a uh, pantry would be, you know, a big pantry that's cool would be great. Um, but if you use the ball jar um, sealer, so you put the cap on the ball jar. You don't put the you don't put the ring. You just put the cap on. They have an attachment that actually goes down onto it. And you plug in the hose, and it goes over to your sealer, so it takes all the air out of your your containers. So put all your food in there, everything. If you get peppers and chopped peppers, and if you like to mince up onions for your salads, your leftovers, everything, put it all in there and seal it. It'll last for two or three weeks. We usually have leftovers, and they go bad in like three or four days, and they're all hairy or they're rotten. you got to throw them out. We were throwing a lot of money away. So now we put everything in those containers, and uh, it's a, basically a game changer where, you know, we don't have tons of endless supplies of money to um, buy food. I mean, we just started eating meat again, and a good grass-fed, grass-finished steak is like $18 a pound. So, do we have a lot of money to be throwing away on leftovers? No. So, put them in your seal meal, in your ball jars, seal them up, air seal them. It's really the best thing to do. My friend in Nashua told me that um, she got strawberries and she put them in a glass jar, just, just a regular glass jar. And she said, oh, my God, I, I had the strawberries in the glass jar for, like, over a week, and they didn't go bad. I'm like, hmm, I have the seal of meal. I don't have the attachment anymore, the, the, the hose. So I said, well, I'll order one off Amazon. And, um, yeah, works awesome. We've been using it probably maybe a month now or so. And we keep whole peppers in there. We keep minced peppers. We keep minced onions, mushrooms. Mushrooms always get slimy in like three or four days. I mean, you buy them and you've got to use them. So everybody buys stuff and they think they're going to cook all this stuff. And then something happens and they don't cook it and it all goes bad. And you got to throw it all out. That's throwing a lot of money away. So... Everything goes in there. Mushrooms, every single thing you can think of. Cauliflower, broccoli. Um, just chop it up, throw it in there, and seal it. It's it's really fantastic. I'm not sponsored, but uh, everybody should do that if you want to save money. These times are so tough. Um, we've got to be careful with the money that we have, you know. Um, all right, so I'm going to let this dry overnight. And we'll come back tomorrow and uh, finish this up. Okay, guys? If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Thank you.